Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. I've been experimenting with Kumiko and I need to build a frame around this. I'm going to use this for a uh, lid to a hexagonal box and I thought I'd share with you a fixture that I've made for my Festool Capex miter saw. So let's just get over the saw. I'm going to show you some miters, then I'm going to pull a fixture off and share with you all the features I've put in. Okay, so let's talk about the construction of this uh, Capex miter fixture. Again, if you don't have a Capex, see if it will fit your saw. Uh, you'll probably have to change to some dimensions, uh, but I've, I've provided a link to the SVG file so you can scale those, move things around if you want to. Now, this has a base, two fixed fences, one fixed and these are stationary, these are glued in place. I went overkill on the dowel, there's four dowels in it. The plan calls for it. I think you'd be fine with two dowels on the outer end, so if I had to do it again, I'd probably forego those two center dowels build. The dowel pins are eight millimeter by 35, and these two pins are not glued. The fence sensor is not glued, and I either take a uh, drill blank or a punch and drive this out and then uh, drive the pins out so that I can replace the insert. And I've already replaced this insert once because you don't see a cut here, but you do here. Uh, I went with uh, machine screws to hold this in place. And the reason I did that was because over time as I drove these dowels in and replaced this insert, I expected the holes to enlarge and not have as tight a fit and I wanted to make sure that this was secure in place which is why I used machine screws and threaded inserts on the bottom. I've made two replaceable uh, miter, what I call miter stops. Uh, this one's 60 degrees, this is 45 and on the opposite ends of these I have uh, 90 degree cuts so you could use this as a as a miter stop for cross cutting if you if you wanted to. I've put in each side of the fence I've put four holes with threaded inserts so that it gives me with two knobs I can position this thing from basically all the way here all the way out. If I use two I could get it out to there. Now I've positioned these grooves exactly in the center so that if you wanted a capture cut instead of this open type miter, you could put it that way. And ease all the sharp edges. Uh, I cut all of these pieces with the exception of the hardware keys that we're getting ready to see when I pull this thing off. 
I cut all this on the CNC. Uh, you could use the file to cut this out on Shaper Origin. I used 18 millimeter Baltic birch. Let me pull this thing off. I used all the, the, the material. I just used everything I had on hand. I did not, did not go intentionally purchase anything extra. So I've used the, uh, the crown extensions on the uh, Capex uh, miter saw and I've decided to use the T-slots. If you wanted, now if you wanted to, you could use either the F-style clamp or uh, I think they call this quick release clamp. Uh, clamp this fence down to the fixed fence portion. I, since I had these uh, T-nuts on hand and the right size, I decided to use that. Just uh, These alignment keys and grooves and you can see actually it took I either mismeasured or wrote the measurement down incorrectly between these two T-slots. So I ended up re-milling that just using the same piece of wood. I, I uh, used the elongated uh, T-nuts instead of the standard length. Now if you build this, I used flanged threaded inserts. These are easy locks. Uh, it's designed for soft wood. They're 13 millimeters long. So the actual top of this is recessed from the top of the, uh, the base by just under five millimeters because I've recessed these flanges. And the reason I recessed the flanges, I didn't want it scratching up the table, nor did I want it deflecting the jig if, it's, if it stood proud. So I used a, actually used a, uh, a V-bit at first to uh, mill these out and then uh, Later, I decided I didn't go deep enough because they still stood proud, and I just took a countersink bit and a drill bit uh, in a handheld drill to, uh, to enlarge the, uh, the countersinks there. Make sure any screws you got coming through, whether it be from one of these or these machine screws here, to ensure that they do not stick out proud of the bottom. Can't think of anything else there, but put it on. I just like to uh, position the alignment keys and I typically reach underneath and kind of straighten out those T-nuts because they do have a tendency to turn and once you get that in place it just slides right in position, slide it up against the fence, tighten it up. And it's secure ready for a uh, ready for the next job. Now the, the clamp itself is a 3D printed item. You see that this is just printed out of PLA and you'll see some curvature there because you can put a lot of force on these. I think I downloaded this from uh, printables.com and you can download those, just do a search. Uh, any search engine on printables you should be able to find that. But on these uh, threaded inserts I position these to avoid the common angles that I use. If you use different angles, you may need to relocate these holes. But my common angles on the miter saw are 90 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees. So I've positioned this to where if I go over to 45 degrees, I'm going between these two inserts. If I'm at 30 degrees, I go between the inserts, and if I'm at 90 degrees, I go between the inserts, and that's the case on both sides. If you go 15 degrees, which that's one of the detents, and you'll note that that blade is right over that insert, uh, make sure that your trench depth won't contact that uh, uh, threaded inserts, because those are, I think, are there a zinc alloy. Uh, how much damage they'll do to a blade, carbide blade, I don't know. It'll probably cut through the insert, but probably won't help your blade any. So I think that about wraps it up for this video, this Capex miter fixture. It has been a great addition and upgrade to this Capex, anyway, for at least my uses, because it enables me to make quality, accurate, and safe uh, miter cuts on short pieces of material. Now the material, I'm using this material because I'm experimenting with uh, uh, new box lid designs for my, my boxes. I like hexagonal boxes. I take offcuts from furniture projects and I make small projects like this. 
and this dado and, and uh, profile is intended to fit into this 15 degree splayed side uh, box and fit over here like this. Actually, I could use this one. This one still has the, uh, the anti-chip material in it. And uh, position this around here to frame uh, the Kumiko lid. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll catch you on the next one.